Now we're back to SpongeBob SquarePants. Welcome everybody to Cosmodoy, where today I want to look at every Spongebob Season 8 episode ranked from worst to best. Are you all still as exhausted from Spongebob Season 7 as I am? Well, too bad, because today we are looking at the season that some consider to be even worse than that one. Season 7 not only in many aspects failed to capture any of the essence Spongebob is known for, but for many also destroyed the reputation Spongebob once had, and at this point many people were just not expecting the series to ever get better. It was also the point where pseudo edgy 13 year old Cosmo decided to never watch a cartoon in his life ever again and instead only watch Minecraft Let's Plays and I admit that I sort of frowned upon what the show that defined my childhood has become, making me never want to come back to it and seeing all these reviews of season 8 on the internet definitely didn't make me change my mind on that so I was very excited to have my mindset be completely changed by actually watching the entirety of of the season? Did any of this happen to turn out this way? Well, I guess we'll find out today in my ranking of SpongeBob SquarePants Season 8. Number 47, and therefore the worst episode of the season, is Pat Sitter Pat. Okay, you'll probably notice an ongoing trend with my reviews in this season that I actually don't genuinely despise any of these episodes, at least not from a moral standpoint, which of course you should never view them from anyway, but that is what made me dislike most of the episodes are ranked very low on the other lists, that they had one significant feature that I found to be absolutely terrible, overshadowing the usually already subpar other qualities the episode had. Here it is pretty much the same thing. Patrick is super unlikable and a lunatic beyond the point of being charming due to Gary being a victim in this scenario. As soon as there is a victim involved that usually damages the episode and due to that makes me as a viewer appreciate the rest of the episode less because they expect us to take the moral high ground and side with Gary who in most of these episodes doesn't get justification in the end. However, I found that in this one while Patrick doesn't necessarily get punished for any of his actions, Gary also gets the chance to have a moment of relief after everything Patrick has done to him, making the ending feel a lot more justified than most of the other episodes that featured a negative portrayal of how the people Gary cares about treat him. While I realized that many people expected me to absolutely tear this episode apart considering how big of a distaste I had towards a pal for Gary, which sure makes me stand out on this platform, and also due to how I said I would probably rank this as one of the worst episodes of all time, but after a lot of reconsideration, I would lie if I said that I found this episode to be downright horrific. I just found it to be not entertaining at all from a structural standpoint because the stakes were not very high and most of it felt like loosely connected slapstick. It was more so a structurally poor episode along with a terrible moral than it was a downright insult to every one of my senses like was the case with episodes like The Splinter and Fungus Among Us. It's a terrible episode and definitely the worst of the season but it both isn't far ahead of the next pick and is by no means as bad as some of the other lowest picks in the other seasons. There. Are you happy now? <laughs> Ay, 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 this episode is a bummer. It's one thing to have poorly written suicide jokes in an episode like One Cause Meal. It's a whole other thing to base the whole episode around it. To have the one ongoing theme be that Squidward does not see any purpose in his life anymore because he doesn't have a happy memory. This is not only a very weak episode joke-wise, but also in my opinion completely destroys any moral about there being ups and downs in everyone's life it could have brought to the table and instead lowered itself down to stating that the only thing in life that can bring Squidward joy is making Spongebob's just a little more miserable. Sure, that's a great moral to teach to kids because if there's one thing I think of when I hear the name Spongebob it's freaking suicide, what? Well just like One Cause Meal I get what they were going for in a sense and can therefore appreciate some of their technical decisions in terms of the visuals, I can at the same time completely understand why anyone would see this as the worst episode of the entire 
entire show. Because what I'm failing to grasp is how we ended up with not one, but two episodes focused heavily around this super deep issue in our society, in a bloody show focused on a yellow undersea sponge. This is not the way this show should go. This is not the way of the sponge. Dude, I'm on fire with these transitions today. How can you have such an irredeemably stubborn, overtly weird to the point where it got distracting, horribly designed, cranky and unlikable character be the star of an entire episode? It is such a shame that they wasted the hilarious Rich Vulture's potential on this character because I like absolutely nothing about Fuzzy Acorns and it baffles me that we were supposed to sympathize with him here in any way. Added on to the fact that I could tell you not a single joke that landed for me in this one. The action was definitely the best part here, which also prevented it from being unbearable, but boy did I hate this character. Number 44, Face Freeze. Little known fact, when you open up the dictionary and look up cringe, there's not only a picture of this episode in there, but it has the entire episode in there because one picture just wouldn't be enough. Seriously, this episode played off of one of my biggest childhood fears in the most horrific ways possible and could have maybe been able to teach me something about never making faces like these back then. But even as a kid, I wouldn't even have been able to make them if I wasn't some weird alien creature. Who came up with these? What is that? Number 43, it's a Spongebob Christmas. This episode I feel like is a mixed bag for many and I can definitely see why. The stop motion animation is beautiful and the effort that must have gone into this is nothing short of incredible. Plus the premise is cool and there were some decent jokes, but not only did no actual Christmas feeling come up in me whatsoever, but it all also felt very bland. Like I said, the premise was cool, but it did by no means work in the context of a Christmas episode whatsoever. It Additionally, the patchy segments felt more than shoehorned in, but I guess I'm kinda used to that at this point. It just feels like a big missed opportunity and doesn't even come close to having any of the quality Christmas who had. Number 42. Ba -ba -ba face, ba -ba face. I feel like it's an unwritten rule for the writers at this point that Pearl-related episodes have to revolve around the most awful aspects of any teenager. First drove spurts, now freaking pimples, and both times I don't understand why they needed to portray it this over dramatically. It doesn't add on to the humor in any way and only makes it come across as more gross. Plus, Mr. Krabs is just in this episode. Number 41, Ghoul Fools. Okay, why they didn't just use the Flying Dutchman here is beyond me. They had met him for the first time, multiple times before. What would be the difference now? And other than that, this episode just lacks anything that would make it stand out. The visuals are okay, but most Flying Dutchman episodes are. And again, why didn't they just use him instead of these weird nameless pirate knockoffs, only for him to then appear anyway? It just makes it feel inconsistent and ultimately forgettable in my opinion. Whew, man, reviewing these episodes has been exhausting so far. Who knew there was so much garbage in season 8? I think I might need someone more qualified than me to take over for a second. I wonder how much Man Ray's voice actor got paid per line here. He is ridiculously silent to the point where it even becomes a little jarring, and everything else going on is just as boring. Plankton and Man Ray teaming up could make for such an action-packed episode, but what we got here was way too focused on Plankton in in contrast to Man Ray, when Man Ray should have been more focused on than anyone else, being a character that we don't see as often. Man Ray, for the most part, just stands there and seems like he wants to get out of the episode as soon as fishably possible. The only thing I really like about the episode is that going to work song. And on top of all of that, the jokes are nothing to write home about. Number 39, a SquarePants family vacation. I say that title still wondering where the SquarePants family actually comes in because most of it is just another SpongeBob and Patrick shenanigans episode and simply put, another special that easily could have been cut down to 11 minutes. Dragged out, boring premise, plain bad final song and just not a very enjoyable episode, which is even worse due to its 22 minute mark, which is a problem that Move It or Lose It technically isn't facing and while I find this episode's premise to be so ridiculous it could have worked incredibly well, somehow I still feel like everything this episode wanted to tell could have been resolved in like a minute instead of, I don't know, 11. Sure, some of the jokes were decent, but most of it felt too similar to the episode The Good Krabby Patty Name, which coincidentally was also in the same season. Had this one had a little less filler, especially near the end, and instead more actual conflict between Mr. Krabs and Plankton, it could have been a lot more memorable. Number 
Number 37, Bubble Buddy returns. Which is a lie, he doesn't return. It's just his equally annoying son, Shiny, who again, just ends up annoying a bunch of citizens in Bikini Bottom. Which I'll admit was entertaining in some ways, but I feel like this episode could have been a lot better, had most of this been not been at their expense. And due to its similarities to the original Bubble Buddy episode, it also ended up not being all that memorable. Although I do find it hilarious to think that in Bikini Bottom, this is how pillows are made. Snail bite! Snail bite. Snail bite. Snail bite. Playwright. Daylight. Gravesite. Number 35, Fiasco! Why are so many titles screaming at us in this season? Jeez. I really enjoyed the tension in this episode, with seemingly everyone being after this one atrocity of a painting, which unfortunately really wasn't set up all that well from the start. If Squidward was such a supposed fan of Fiasco, why wouldn't he immediately recognize him? If not for his looks, at least for his behavior, which I'm sure he would be known for at this point. You'd assume someone just straight up demolishing a bunch of Krabby Patties would be more recognizable a figure to him if he was an artist known for doing this type of stuff. Additionally, it's another one of those endings where Squidward of all people had to be the one that was conned for no apparent reason and unsurprisingly Smooth Jazz at Bikini Bottom is another great example for that. It's great how we see Squidward so excited to see Kelpie G, a character I long wished for a return of, but not only is barely anything happening to Squidward justified, SpongeBob is also exclusively there to annoy him and the viewers in the process. They're already there together, why not have some more shenanigans involving Kelpie G and not purely focus it on making Squidward's experience them miserable? Number 33, The Googly Artiste. Would you like to make something too? I'm a critic. I don't make things, I judge things. Too real, SpongeBob. Too real. Number 32, Karen 2.0. I feel like we had like 40 episodes revolving around Plankton's and Karen's marital problems at this point, which I really wouldn't mind if each of them didn't revolve around Plankton either screwing up in some way or just shutting Karen off completely, which makes it really hard for me to distinguish them. And not only that, this one essentially has the same ending as Computer Overload. Don't get me wrong, it's cute to see the both of them reconciliate again, but I've gotten so used to it at this point that I just don't really care anymore. Number 31, Demolition Doofus. I never really got the hatred towards this one. Sure, Mrs. Puff did turn out to be overly cruel, even for her character, but then again, Spongebob did deserve most of it, and from both of their points of view, it does make a lot of sense to me, and so I don't really get where the burning hatred for this episode some people have brought to the table is coming from. Oh, oh, it's, it's the fact that she's trying to brutally murder him, isn't it? Yeah, no, I, I think I get it now. Number 30, Glove World R.I.P. Glove puns. Glove set. Number 29, Home Sweet Rubble. Throughout this whole episode, I was thinking to myself, hey, but what about Squidward? Where was he in all of this? And sure enough, he was actually on the pineapple's exterior this whole time. And I really enjoyed this twist and the whole concept in general, despite how similar it was to Home Sweet Pineapple. But the way Gary was treated throughout this episode just really rubbed me the wrong way. Number 28, Restraining SpongeBob. I really like the lawyers in this episode, which admittedly is mostly due to their names, but I also enjoy that Squidward find someone to hate even more than Spongebob here. I didn't think this was possible at this point. The mischievous scheme he comes up with here is a nice break from his plans usually failing miserably and so seeing Patrick being the one ruining it for him was refreshing but still annoying nonetheless. Number 27, Plankton's Good Eye. Great, so we now basically have had every single main character turn all their defining personality traits to the polar opposite at least once, save for maybe Sandy. Am I the only one that's kind of getting tired of this concept? Number 26, accidents will happen. Much like restraining Spongebob, I really enjoyed seeing Squidward get the upper hand for the duration of most of the episode, and seeing him be able to get so cocky at everyone was just a nice change of pace from the entire world turning against him like is usually the case. While the ending didn't necessarily surprise me, it also wasn't distracting or anything, it was most of the jokes that could have used some work, because really you can only have Squidward be extra picky about everything so many times before it becomes a dragged out crusty towers. Number 25 for here or to go. Call me immature, but this is the first time a poop joke actually worked for me <laughs> because of how dragged out and ridiculous it is, along with the expression this customer makes. And I just really love whenever the customers and citizens of Bikini Bottom get portrayed as overtly stupid, which this episode excels at. And I also liked how Mr. Krabs was desperately trying to pad out the situation, but due to that, the episode for the most part ended up being 
exactly that, padded out for too long, with not enough noteworthy jokes in between to justify the good parts it had. Not terrible, but not worth going back to. Number 24, the Krabby Patty that ate Bikini Bottom. As you may know, I'm not the biggest fan of gross visuals in Spongebob. Not any cartoon, but in ones where it just doesn't fit the vibe, as is the case in most of these episodes. But in this one, I was surprised to see that it was actually portrayed as not that gross, and more so reminded me of a cheaply made horror film, which unfortunately also made the episode end up as not that funny, but I do feel like there's some potential with this concept. Number 23, Mr. Krabs takes a vacation. I was kinda hoping that you'd come along with us, Spongebob. Come along with us, Spongebob. Come along with us, Spongebob. Come along with us. What I really like about this episode is that it's giving Mr. Krabs a chance to use his overly crazy money obsession for the greater good, as it is what enables him to stop these burglars. Granted, most of the episode was spent on showcasing what a greedy and petty little man he is and to the displeasure of Spongebob and Pearl, but at least it got turned around in the end and oh, they actually are giant light bulbs! Number 22, Frozen Face Off. I'm a little conflicted about this special, on the one hand it feels like some regular winter related TV special that Spongebob characters just so happen to be a part of. On the other, it is an actually quite enjoyable episode in some ways. On the one hand, I find the sea monster they encounter to be totally out of place. On the other, I like what they do with it and have it appear to be somewhat of a threat. On the one hand, I felt like there was a whole lot of filler in this episode. On the other, you got a nice sense of competition here. I think you get what I mean. Most of the specials in this season have been really weak, so at least I found this one to to be somewhat entertaining, but it might as well have not revolved around Spongebob characters. The plot is way too predictable and basic for that and doesn't do a whole lot with it, all things considered. Number 21, Free Samples. Unlike most of his evil ploys, this one actually kind of works out for Plankton in the best way possible, and it was nice to see Mr. Krabs and Spongebob actually seeming somewhat at a loss again, giving the episode the tension many of the other Plankton episodes in the season were lacking. This one is also experimenting with some weirder visuals, at least considering what we used to in the 8th season, but it is still definitely lacking on the joke department, and due to that and the occasional error, like Plankton laughing without sound here, feels a bit lazily made. But I feel like with a bit of retweaking, it could have worked quite well. Number 20, Walking the Plankton. Karen really steals the show in this episode. I really enjoy the segments where we see her and Plankton, and kinda wish more focus was on the two of them instead of Spongebob and Mr. Krabs, who were just kinda there. It makes the episode feel sorta loosely stitched together if you ask me. Number 19, The Good Krabby Name. I really enjoyed Spongebob and Patrick's campaign for the Krusty Krab in this episode and found some of the more visual gags, like the two of them now having their counterpart skin on for a change, to be a nice touch. It's also nice to see Mr. Krabs being greedy enough to care for not like 30 or 40% more customers, but only like 5 or 6 more people. This is how you portray him as the right amount of greedy, unlike episodes like The Scent of Money, where he's just straight up turning evil, which is just not his usual character. Character. Sure, he gets carried away every now and again, but if it's in a humorous way and doesn't put any other character in any real harm's way, then who cares? Number 18, Sentimental Sponge. I can't be the only one that constantly confuses this one with Day Without Tears, mostly due to the title. And I also feel like this episode directly speaks to me, because I was on all ends of the spectrum. I was the ultimate hoarder for many of my childhood years and refused to let go of any toy I have ever gotten, until I made the the stupid decision to want to throw all my magazines and most of my toys away, many of which I still miss today, and due to that now basically keep everything again. The episode itself does have an interesting enough premise and features quite a few funny gags, like every line involving these policemen, and I also found it sweet that Squidward was willing to help Spongebob in the end, making this a fairly entertaining one. Number 17, Hello Bikini Bottom. Right off the bat, am I actually supposed to believe that Mr. Krabs just straight up sold the Krusty Krab. With that being said, and despite my initial very negative reaction towards this episode, after some reconsideration, it was actually kind of good. Granted, it wasn't the best special in the world, but it was nice to see Ned and the Needlefish return in the major way. I liked the plot of them going on a road trip and trying to collect money for their band, mainly because I just like road trip stories in general. What really drags it down though are the actual song segments themselves, which feature unenthusiastic singing, boring 
visuals, lackluster lyrics, and I'm so glad not the entire episode is focused on them. Number 16, Sweet and Sour Squid. This episode is pretty funny. Plankton and Squidward are two characters we don't often see together, which is nice, and it was great that it wasn't reduced to just have a cop-out Squidward ending and instead focused on Plankton, you know, the actual evil character of the two. He does get what was coming for him, and it definitely makes up for how he was using Squidward in this episode, and I found the scenes where he was playing his clarinet to just be very entertaining because of how into his awful playing he was. No one does it better, he's the best there is. When you ask him how he does it, he says, it's all in the rest. Number 15, Oral Report. Listen, I know Patrick is supposed to be too hard a driller here, but sometimes I wish I had someone to force me to do a video like this. Like, some sort of motivation to work on it. I feel like I'm just not being pressured enough to do that, you know? It would be just really great to have something like that. Number 14, Bubble Troubles. Hey, look, it's the needle stack from pre-hibernation week. And it's surrounding the word bubble as if to imply they are going to pop this bubble. <laughs> uh, good times. While the concept of or laws on how breathing on land works in the SpongeBob world has become a bit iffy, it is still nice to see it used in this episode. Additionally, I like the idea of Sandy becoming stupid now. Oh. Oh, okay, so I guess we did get what I was talking about in Plankton's Good Eye, didn't we? But unlike that episode, I found how they established the premise here to be much more enjoyable, and it also makes much more sense because it is due to a natural cause, and less because of some weird DNA thing which ultimately was very inconsistent because it didn't really affect Plankton's real personalities, whereas here Sandy actually doesn't seem like her former self at all anymore, and I also liked how Spongebob used an oxygen tank to get above the water surface to get some more oxygen, there were some quite clever gags in this episode. Number 13, Squidward School for Grown-Ups. I'm getting some serious grandma's kisses vibes from this one, and it also kind of feels like the other end of Porous Pockets, but with Patrick getting cocky this time around, which actually turns out to not have been his fault at all, which was a nice twist. Number 12, The Hot Shot. Tony Jr. is such an enjoyable character, I cannot identify with him in the sliders, seeing as how I was anything but the cool kid at any point in my life. But it is so great that they didn't portray him as this one-dimensional jaw character, but rather that there is some genuine chemistry between Spongebob and him. I wouldn't say that the episode itself was amazing or anything, but I like that he gave Spongebob some additional motivation to finally get his driver's license, instead of focusing on him just not being able to get it. Number 11, Mermaid Man Begins. As you all know, my favorite part of any superhero for me has always been their origin story, and this one is just perfectly ridiculous, with it just keeping on going and going and going and I'm not gonna lie, this little segment had me laughing for minutes straight even after it had ended. It could have easily been dragged out for way too long but actually ended up not outstaying its welcome at all. The rest of the episode is also okay but I felt like some of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy's dialogue was a bit too uninteresting and could have been portrayed with a little more excitement. Maybe if they didn't have the storytelling element to it and just jumped straight into how they first met this could have worked but I guess they just had to work in Spongebob somehow. We're entering the top 10 with Squiditis. I actually really enjoyed this episode. It's nice to see Squidward's and Mr. Krabs karma get back at them, but nothing of it being too cruel towards either of them, and Spongebob wasn't too annoying either. Sure, it wasn't the best or most original plot in the world, but at least it made me smile a couple of times and was just a good time. Nothing noteworthy, just a simple and enjoyable episode. And you can tell how low the stakes are that it still made it into the top 10. Number 9, drive-thru. Am I the only one that felt like this episode was way longer than it actually is? That isn't to say that it was boring or felt like it was dragged out, but there was just so much going on here with all these various characters like Larry and Plankton and Pearl and basically every side character in the show that it made me really enjoy how this episode managed to construct all of this into a consistent narrative. There are also quite a few clever gags along with it, like how Spongebob accidentally spills the customer's order through the window. 
Uh, twice, and there's also a surprising amount of property damage Mr. Krabs is inflicting on his restaurant here, and I love it. Number 8, a friendly game. For those of you who haven't seen my top 10 mini golf episodes list, which I made as part of Toon Sports Week, I really enjoyed this episode. Not only for involving mini golf, but also because you get a nice sense of competition between SpongeBob and Patrick. Sure, it was very dickish of him to sabotage SpongeBob's every move, but at the same time, also completely accurate to his character. And additionally, the mini golf of course they come up with looks very creative and I enjoyed quite a few jokes like them building Squidward's likeness out of butter and the two of them ending up wrecking his entire house for what like the 40th time now. It's certainly one of the best episodes involving sports in the show. Number 7 Chum Fricassee. This episode is pretty funny. Plankton and Squidward are two characters we don't often see together. Well color me impressed we actually got two in the same season? Well I don't mind. I still find their chemistry to be very endearing and it's so great to see Squidward actually having success with something. It is such a nice and refreshing thing to see. It shows that the show can still manage to have an entertaining episode involving him as the main character that doesn't revolve around making it seem as though his life is completely miserable. The jokes were also great, like these sophisticated fish starting to just eat the chum with their mouths because it's too delicious, or Mr. Krabs' secret identity crumpled or wrapper. It would have also been completely understandable to have the ending be that Squidward's success got to his head and he therefore or ended up diminishing the quality of his product, which they would have had me completely on board with until they had to ruin it instead with the most cop-out ending I've seen in a long time. Bummer. Number 6, The Other Paddy. As you may know at this point, I always enjoy episodes involving Mr. Krabs and Plankton's rivalry, and this one finally has them working together for real again, even if it was only due to Spongebob making them, which turned out to be a genuinely nice twist in the end. It also had a few nice jokes, like how you're made to believe that Plankton is hiding under Mr. Krabs' hat, even though as it turns out he was actually carrying him around. Sure, the fact that Spongebob apparently already opened up shop when he was still discussing how he could get Get the two of them to work together again wasn't all that believable and it wasn't the funniest episode in the world but it had a few nice gags here and there and I found it to be fairly enjoyable. Number 5 Mooncation I like to imagine this episode being what we missed out on when Sandy went to the moon and Sandy's rocket because while you could argue that these two premises are fairly similar I would argue that this one is actually better in some ways especially the visuals on the moon and some of the humor like this fairly underrated shot of Spongebob. Please some of you you use that as your profile picture, I'd love seeing that. I also appreciate that Sandy didn't say that Spongebob ruined her vacation or anything in the end. It's nice to see her fun-loving side overtake her most stern one in this episode. Number 4, House Sitting for Sandy. Whoa, hold it right there! A second Sandy-related episode in a row? In the top 5? Yeah, I couldn't believe it either. They really did their homework when it comes to Sandy episodes. She has become a much more enjoyable character within these last two seasons for me. Even though she technically isn't the star of this one, I found especially the last scene where she revealed that all of this was a ploy so that Patrick and Spongebob would wreck the place for her to be a nice surprise. And the last sequence where Spongebob ends up wrecking the place for real this time to be a nice slapstick sequence, which really is all this episode is. And in a season that is so low on the joke department, it's just nice to have episodes like this one and... Number 3, Patrick's Staycation. This episode's premise is just perfectly ridiculous, with Patrick needing a vacation from his life that is basically just one gigantic vacation and then getting Spongebob to do everything for him that shows just how little effort he wants to put into anything in life. I find this work ethic to be somewhat admirable. I can't go a single day without doing anything without feeling like a gigantic slob. It's also nice to see Spongebob care so much for Patrick that he's willing to put up with doing all of this for him, which made me be able to look past the fact that well, he's not really being all that nice about it, if we're being honest. Who was unusually nice in this episode was Mr. Krabs, who we would normally never see from this side, which was a pleasant surprise and made this episode all the more pleasant. Number 2 in Spongiac. I absolutely adore the concept for this episode, and many of the visuals reminded me of Squidward and Clarinet Land in a lot of ways, although I mostly get some heavy Fight Club vibes from this one, mostly due to SpongeBob's sleep deprived nature here. I feel like there was the right amount of showing how little lack of sleep. Spongebob had in the beginning to him just straight up bathing in mustard because he has completely lost himself. The structure, visuals and also jokes here work like a charm and it's definitely one of the most creative episodes of the season. I only would have wished for a better ending because Spongebob now being used as a mustard dispenser? Really?
That's all you got. And my number one favorite SpongeBob Season 8 episode is Planet of the Jellyfish. While we're on the topic of being reminded of movies, this episode is an almost perfect parody of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, or basically any horror movie ever. Complete with creepy title card, alien-like creatures, whose eyes are more than reminiscent of those Invader Zim has, and a surprisingly great atmosphere that admittedly could have been improved upon with better lighting, but in return, in my opinion, we got quite a few great gags, most noticeably how they always say hold the mayo. Now I know what you're saying, hey but the Krabby Patties didn't have mayonnaise before, but let's be real, does it really matter? This concept is already ridiculous enough as it is, with aliens coming to Bikini Bottom just out of nowhere, so that really didn't bother me at all. Especially because, like I said, this episode was just a ton of fun, with them referencing the 11 minute mark again, a smart usage of background music here, and just a lot of clever details in general, like Gary turning into a flower pot or the episode leaving on a cliffhanger. I hate mayonnaise and mustard. <laughs> I like mustard. So despite some rather minor nitpicks I have with it, this is definitely the episode of the season I enjoyed the most, but if we're being honest, what does that really matter in the end? This season, for the most part, feels so unfinished and lazily made in a lot of aspects that slightly better episodes like the ones in the top 10 really don't make much of a difference in the great scheme of things. Although, despite all the negative criticism thrown towards its way, the criticisms I would have don't really boil down to specific episodes or aspects of those. It more comes down to it for the most part just being painfully mediocre or even bad at times. It was less that a specific episode shocked me for being insultingly unwatchable or poorly made and more so that the entire season for the most part was just not entertaining. Which is definitely the thing that annoyed me most about it, that none of the episodes on this list are worth mentioning because all of them become a big blur. You can see that with episodes like Ghoul Fools that feel like a copy of any other Flying Dutchman episode but worse or It's a Spongebob Christmas that desperately tried to capture the magic of Christmas Who but couldn't because the writing in it never made it feel as though it was trying to tell anything of significance. The moralities of anything were completely thrown out the window for all of this, which would be fine and understandable because after all this is a cartoon, if they ever gave me the feeling that I was watching something that was meant to be enjoyed, if there was ever a joke that actually landed, if there was anything that I would want to come back to but for the most part, this season just fails to deliver in all of those regards. Does this make it the worst season ever? Absolutely not. I found so many aspects of both seasons 7 and 5 to be unbearable, including the writing and the comedy, and like I said, the shock value of most episodes it seemed to have been relying on a lot, which I didn't find as heavily with this season, but at the same time, I'm also struggling to say it was better than season 6. In some ways it is, I could single out more bad episodes with that season than is the case here, but I would argue that there is a more consistent quality to be found here than in season 6. So for now, I'll put it above it, but that is open for debate and I might change my mind about that at some point. It's better than seasons 5 and 7 though, that's for sure. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was my worst to best episodes of Spongebob season 8. But what do you think? What are your favorite episodes of the season? Which ones do you absolutely despise? And just how mad at me are you for not putting episode XY lower on the list? Let let me know in the comments and of course also a huge thank you to PyGuy for voicing the super aquatic villain Team Abisco segment, his channel will be in the video description. That's all for now guys, take care!